In this problem, we're told a box weighing 77 newtons rests on a table. A rope tied to the box runs vertically upward over a pulley and a weight is hung from the other end. Determine the force that the table exerts on the box if the weight hanging on the other side of the pulley weighs 30 newtons, B is going to be 60, and C is going to be 90 newtons. So whenever I do these problems, I think the first thing you should do is just draw a free body diagram of what's going on. Essentially what a free body diagram is where you label uh, the different forces acting on your object. So in this case, uh, we're talking about this box here, right? So we have this box, it's on this table. And what we want to do is label all the forces uh, acting on the box. So what do we know? So we know the box is going to be weighing 77 newtons. So it's going to be 77 newtons. And when we describe weight, there's always, if it's on top of something, it's going to be exerting a force on the ground, or the table in this case. So there's going to be a 77 newton force being pushed towards the ground because of the weight, essentially. They're describing the force that acts on the ground. So whenever you have a force acting on an object, uh, we know by Thurton's, or Newton's third law that there's for every action, there's an opposite or equal reaction. So essentially what that means is essentially uh, this is going to have a force acting against it. So it's just going to be the normal force. We call it F sub N. So there's going to be some normal force acting against this because of this force acting this way. Because there's going to be an equal uh, reaction and so it doesn't move, right? Because if it was different, the box would be moving. But essentially, we just have this normal force acting up this way. So those are two of the forces. We have one more, though. So the last force is going to be the force of tension. And that's going to be going upwards. And if you can think about this, right? Like, if we have a weight here, what it's going to do is if we put heavier and heavier weights, eventually, at some point, it's going to make this thing rise off the table. And it's going to push it up this way, right? So having this is going to put a tension force uh, going upwards. So this is our free body diagram. In order to solve, you need to know this formula. Or essentially what you need to do, it's not really a formula, but your sum of the forces is what you want to do. So you want to add up all your forces, and then you're going to be able to solve for one of your forces by doing that. So keep in mind what they're asking. They're asking to determine the force that the table exerts on the box. So the force that the table exerts on the box, we just drew. It's F sub N, right? Because this uh, table is exerting this force on it. And so essentially what we're trying to do is find F sub N. And so what we want to do is add up all these forces and solve for it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So what you want to do is write out all your forces. So we're going to add them up. So F sub T is one of our force. And if it's going upwards, you want to label it positive. If it's going downwards, you want to label it negative, right? Because upwards is positive, downwards is negative. So we have F sub T, it's positive. So we just leave it positive. So then we want to do this force right here, the weight, right? So minus 77, because we know that one. And then plus uh, F sub N, right? Because F sub N is also going up. So this is what we're going to use, and we're going to solve this. So we can rewrite uh, the sum of the forces as mass times acceleration. <gasps> so we know that acceleration in this case, the box isn't moving. So we set it equal to zero. And zero times any mass is just zero. So it's just going to be zero equals, and then we can add these up. But what we want to do is find the tension force, and that's going to allow us to solve for S sub, uh, F sub n. So the tension force, what is it? So we know that this thing they tell us, uh, if the weight hanging on the other side of the pulley is 30 newtons. So when this is 30 newtons, it's going to create a 30 newton force here, right? Because this is going to be pulling down, so this is going to be going up, right? So this is going to be 30 newtons. So for A, F sub T is going to be equal to 30 newtons. So if we just plug in 30 for that, minus 77 plus F sub N, we can solve for F sub N, right? So it's going to be 0 equals 30 minus 77 is minus 47 plus F sub N. If I add 47 to both sides, you're going to get F sub N equals 47. And so keep in mind it's Newtons. So this right here is going to be your answer to A. So it's going to be 47 Newtons. This is that force right here when the thing, right, when this thing is 30 Newtons. So that's A. And so essentially, you should realize now that the only thing changing about this problem is the tension force, right? So we plugged in 30 for the first one. We're going to plug in 60 and 90 for the other two. So for B, just plug in 60. For C, plug in 90. So we know 0 is going to be equal to, instead of 30, we're using 60 minus 77 plus F sub n. This is going to become minus 17 plus F sub n. So 17 equals F sub n. So we're, we know F sub n equals 17 newtons. So this is going to be your answer to B. So C is a little bit of a trick question, or you got to think about it differently. So let's plug in 90, and I'll show you why. So plug in 90, right, our tension minus 77 plus F sub N. 
So it's going to be 0 equals 0 equals So 13 plus f sub n. And so what we're going to want to do is if we minus it to the other side, so f sub n equals, so it's going to be minus 13. So minus 13 newtons. And so keep in mind, uh, when you do a force, right, if I'm pushing on something, can I push on something negative newtons? It doesn't really make sense. You could like, uh, something could have suction, but in this case, when they're asking like you're pushing, right, pushing up on this box, it doesn't make sense to have negative. So in reality, it's actually zero newtons. So it's a little bit of a trick there. They try and trick you with that. But keep in mind, since it's negative, it's just going to be zero. So this right here is going to be your answer to C, zero newtons. And so, yeah, just remember to draw your free body diagram and then go ahead and solve. So hopefully you found this useful.